Hey, welcome back to Sprague River Homestead. I'm Kanan. I'm Nikki. And it is Wednesday, which means it's another Would You Rather Wednesday. So today, we already have the choice picked out. And what is it going to be? Today is all about Would You Rather Race Chickens or Quail? Oh, that's a good one. Since we have both, and experience with both, <laughs> which one would you rather choose? Well, hang on. We're going to come back right in a minute, make our choices and our defense of why. All right, so we're going to choose between chickens or quail and why, and this time Nikki is going to go first. Ladies first. Ladies first. Okay, I am going to go with quail. Uh, we've raised both now for, I think I've had the quail for what, two, two and a half years. Yeah, something like that. I've had chickens on and off all of my life. Um, there are definite advantages to both, uh, but the, I do like that the quail take a smaller footprint. Um, when you get a cocky little rooster, who cares? <laughs> They'll try and fight you and they're only like that big. Um, I can butcher them by myself very quickly. I, I can do like a dozen in like 45 minutes. Uh, and that's taking my time about it. So they, they go pretty quick. They start laying really fast, usually like six to eight weeks. Some of the jumbos take like 10 to 12 even. Um, and that's about the same rate for when they're ready to butcher, which is nice. So you don't have to keep them forever. The hatch rate on them, at least what I was pulling last year was like 95 all the way up to 99% on my hatches, which is crazy good. Um, and you know, they take like 16 to 19 days to hatch, which is, I mean, chickens are fast at 21. Uh, but these guys are really fast and uh, I was getting eggs every single day from every single hen. So I could easily go out there and get two dozen eggs. Now the eggs are smaller, so it does take like three to every chicken egg. Um, uh, but we find that they're a perfect size for a meal, like one a piece for each of us is plenty. I know some of these people in some of the groups are like, oh, no, you got to make three and four of these a person. And they must be way bigger meat eaters than we are because I find it one, I am stuffed. Like, yeah. um, But most of ours tend to be on the jumbo side. We do, we do have some standards, but I've been breeding them into the jumbos to make all my colors bigger. So most of ours, I think, are classified. True, true jumbos are getting there. Um, so, yeah, we, I think one is fine. Uh they make adorable deviled, deviled eggs. They do. They're, like they're, little, they're little tiny. Size. And it's not as hard as it sounds. Um, cracking them is a little tough till you figure out that you can buy egg scissors. Uh, peeling them, you just crack them once, put them in a container and shake them up and the peels come right off. So I found that they were easy to deal with. Uh, they're higher protein. So you do have to watch. Some people can't deal with very many of them. It, it'll make them actually kind of sick. We didn't have any reaction to them. I had no problem with it all uh, with them at all. I thought they baked fine. Uh, the dogs liked them. I have pretty much no complaints. Uh, they are kind of a messy bird, if depending on how they're managed. That seems to be the thing I hear from everybody the most, is that they don't like how messy they are. And they do best caged. I, I We've done a video here recently about doing them in an aviary. And I do aviary mine all winter long um, just because why not? It makes feeding uh, faster when they're not laying. You can run a strand of Christmas lights over the top of their cages and get them to lay all winter long. I did that a couple years ago. They don't need much light to lay all winter uh, the big thing that I see that a lot of people complain about in the quail is that they think they've got to have this ultra, ultra high protein, which is kind of a wives tale. Cause we don't, I start mine on a, a meat feed, which is only like 21% protein. And then at like four to six weeks, I just put them over to the layer 16% layer feed and they do fine. I don't have any fertility problems. I don't have any issues with prolapse, which is what a lot of people find when they use the ultra high protein feed. Um, and compared to the chickens, I mean, chickens have their place for sure. If you can free range them, which we really can't here because of our predator load, um, chickens would probably be the better way to go. If you could free range them for most of their feed, because it would take that, that extra bit of chores off, but roosters can be a jerk. I mean, we raise a lot of birds, and every now and then you get a nice one, but 
this guy complains all the time about my roosters. Um, eggs are eggs. I know right now chicken eggs are worth gold. <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, I, there's definitely that. The, the one thing that chickens have for, going for themselves that I that quail don't is nothing beats a nice big chicken breast on the grill in the summer. And sometimes you just want wings. Mm-hmm. And if you want wings, you need wings out of a chicken because they got wings. <laughs> you know, quail don't really have any meat on their wings. Right. Other than that, I, I think it's roughly the same. I, I've seen a lot of different things of people claiming quail have better feed conversion or chickens do. From my experience looking at it, I think feed conversion is about the same. It's very, very equal. Uh, the big thing I notice is that if you leave food, quail will eat it. They are not good feed self-regulators. Uh, they will eat until it's gone. They, you know, and some chicken breeds will too. Ours were always pretty good about regulating their own feed. Uh, but quail, they, they're pounders, man. They'll, they'll eat until there's no food left. So uh, you have to kind of regulate them a little bit better. And like I said, they're messy. They like to scratch a whole lot and they will get into their feeders and throw feed and waste feed all over the place if you don't have them set up right. That's my take. So I'm going with quail. What do you got? Oh, <laughs> after all of that, I, I will agree with everything Nikki said about the quail, since she obviously raises both. And I, I really only have chickens or turkeys. The one thing I can say that chickens had for an advantage is I think for us getting them from hatch to a few weeks old, it seemed like in the beginning, we really struggled with quail. Oh, yeah. I, I will say brooding them is, they're just so darn little that I'm used to using the radiant heat pads, which work great for the chickens. It, you almost cannot get them down low enough to work, and quail are really susceptible to cold drafts. Right. So, yeah, I, we can start with the chickens way earlier than we do in the quail. When we start quail early in the year, we have to raise them in the house for our first couple weeks. Right. Because I've tried out in the in the room that I usually do, and I can't keep them alive for nothing. Yeah, so I would say about every category, quail are probably the easier, better thing to do if you can do those. But chickens are probably easier, a little bit hardier to go from just hatched to a couple weeks old. I think they're a little bit easier. They can deal with more fluctuations in in, in environments, I would say. Yeah. They, can, they can do that. So it's just, that may be the deal breaker or the thing that you can accommodate is the fluctuations in environment. But if if you've got a good situation, I think quail would probably be, make you happier in the long run than a chicken, other than they don't have breast feet like the chicken does, nor do they have wings like a chicken. So. Maybe you do both, but otherwise we do both. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, you can do both, and people do uh, quail in like apartments and garages a lot easier than chickens. So maybe if if you live in an HOA, they might be fine with you know having a dozen quail versus three chickens, you know, kind of deal. Yeah. No, I I I definitely think I I mean I like listening to the quail too. It's they're kind of funny. And right. the, the roosters do make more noise, but not as much noise as a chicken rooster. Um, they don't get big spurs. They don't get real nasty with you. And, yeah. You know, nothing like a 10 pound rooster that wants to flog you every time you go in there. Yep. It's, it's uh, real exciting. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. I think we've got two votes for quail, none for chicken. If you have to make the choice of one over the other. Uh, if not, maybe you can do both for different reasons. And and like I said, if you have a good free ranging setup, the, the, the chickens might be better for you. Uh, we don't. So if you've got to keep them caged and it's all feed and it's, yeah, we found that the quail are, I like the quail a little bit better. That's right. So the question is, what do you <laughs> choose between quail or chicken? Leave it down in the comments below and you have to defend your choice. What are you going to choose and why? And don't answer duck. <laughs> We've got a video coming up about ducks too. That's right. <laughs> Inevitably, we'll say something about two choices and somebody will come out of left field. No, the question is quail or chicken. <laughs> that's it. So that's it for this time from Sprague Homestead. We will be back again in the future with another Would You Rather Wednesday. So if you have a topic we haven't covered yet, 
throw it down in the comments below and maybe we'll add it in if it's not on our list already. Otherwise, and there are still stuff on the list. That's right. We'll see you next time from Sprague Homestead. Happy homesteading.